All right, four, three, day one. We are going to discover the pattern for secant and cosecant. Let's do cosecant first. There's more. There's four more functions. What? Cosecant. Now, what's um. What trig function relates back to cosecant? How do we get our cosecant values? Sine. It's with sine's reciprocal. So cosecant is actually 1 over sine. Agree with that? All right, let's take a look at cosecant's graph. just to see what it looks like. And I still have my window set up from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll see the one cycle of sine and now I'm going to do 1 divided by sine. So there's sine, the snake, and then here comes cosecant. Okay, so cosecant looks like it has a U here and then an upside down U here. Uh, the newer calculators aren't going to graph this. This is actually a vertical asymptote here. There's actually going to be a vertical asymptote on the ends here also, and you'll see why in a minute. But so the cosecant is just these two parts, a U up and a U down. So let's see where that's coming from. Because you have a newer calculator. Okay. okay, so let's look at the table. We're going to put three rows in just this one table. And we know our five key values for sine are going from 0 to 2 pi because I don't have any period change or amplitude change or anything like that. Yep, doing it all today though. Why can't we just go back to the unit circle? <laughs> <laughs> I remember we did that and we're like, oh, no, it's the same thing. Are you Teach it for 20 years. I must say, you guys are kind of slow at that stuff here. I think so. I've been done for like a minute. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. We'll, we'll go with that. If you can fill in the y values for sine, go ahead. Got it. Closest one. <laughs>
You're a popular person today, Betsy. Yeah. Either that or you've forgotten a lot of things. I don't know. <laughs> Are we ready? All right. What is sine's y value? What's its pattern? X. So that's a zero. Max is a one. X is a zero. Negative one. X. Okay. To get the corresponding cosecant values, I've got to flip all of these y values over. So I can put them all over one so that I can see them and flip them. <laughs> what happens when I flip zero over? Undefined. Und. What happens when I flip one over? One. One. Flipping zero over again. Und. Und. Flip negative one over. Und. Negative one. And flipping zero over. Und. Und. So, undefined on a graph, what does that show up as? Okay. It's an asymptote. So this, where I had an axis at sign, which is at zero, I actually have a vertical asymptote. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how you say that word correctly. We'll go with that. So I've got an asymptote there. Asymptote here. And the A word there. So we've got three vertical asymptotes. Why do you have to say it like that? How <laughs> would you like me to pronounce it? Asymptote. Asymptote. <laughs> However you want to say it. Okay. Then at this pi over 2, they actually share this max. They share that point. And here at the negative 1, they share that point. Okay? The sine graph and the cosecant graph share those two points. Okay, now I need to know well, what's happening in between. Well, think about it. Do you agree that between um, here and here, there might be like a, uh, a one half, a fraction in here, one half? What happens when you flip over a one half? You get a two. You get a two. You get something way up here. You agree that there'd be like a one fourth in here somewhere? Yeah. And you flip that over, what do you get? Four. 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 Say there was a one one thousandth in here. You flip that over, what do you get? A thousand. What's going to happen is this graph is going to climb and get very close to that A word, but not touch it. Same thing over here. When I flip these fractions over, this thing's going to grow really big. That's where the U is coming from. It's staying between the asymptotes, and it's going to share that max on sine. <coughs> so where sine was a max, we've got a U opening up. Then here, what's going to happen is these negative fractions are going to flip over and get very large in the negative direction. Okay. This, this, these y values flipped over. It's the y values flipped over. Because these are y values. So see, somewhere in here, I have something that's at like one half, one half. And when I flip one half over, I get a two. So I'm up at two. A one third flipped over, I'm up at three. A one tenth flipped over and up at ten. So it makes this U shape. Not that you have to understand that, just know that it's a U opening up. Okay. And this one's going to go down. God bless. Okay? So the pattern, if we compare it back, it's X, max, X, min, X. Just know that what's happening at our axis values every time? Undefined. So wherever we have an X, we're going to have a corresponding undefined, which means asymptote. They share the max values, but then if I've got a max, I just know that I'm going to make it open up. Up. And if it's a min, I'm going to make it open down. And that's your pattern for cosecant. It's going to have three vertical asymptotes, and a one opening up and one opening down. A U opening up and a U opening down. Can you handle that? Sure. Okay. 
So it's going to go right from sine and cosine's pattern how we make these graphs. All right, let's take a look at secant now. Can I get rid of this? Yeah. All right, gone. We will explore y equals secant x. And how are we going to graph secant? One over, c. One over cosine. So, let's take a look. So here's cosine, and then one divided by cosine x. Since they're directly related to each other, I'm going to graph both of them. There's cosine or serial bowl. And then here comes cosecant. So what we have happening, where cosine has an axis value, where it's crossing the x-axis, cosecant has that vertical asymptote. Yeah. Cosine and one over cosine. Same thing here. Cosine crosses the axis here. I got a vertical asymptote. Where it was a min, I've got that U opening down. And then here, what this is, is half of a U opening up. If I went to the left, I would have the other half of the U there. And same thing here. So if I've got maxes, their U's opening up, min's their U's opening down. What do you got? Oh, it's not the calculator. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to see your window. Zoom, trig. Yeah, and then I switch it to um, numbers. Yeah, I don't know what kind of window you had on there. Wow. You're just seeing more. Oh. Mine's just going from here over. Okay, same thing. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing so we can see the pattern in the table. X, Y equals cosine, and then Y equals secant. When will we ever use this, please? I have no idea. No, is it actually like they use them in the lower part of the Well, besides the teacher? No, not be besides the teacher. I'm going to say um, people that explore data that, uh, like weather, and temperatures, they're all, because you know how we warm up in the summer and cool down in the winter, and if we did average temperatures and things, that would all make a, a nice sine or cosine graph. And they would probably gather data like that to predict things, and uh, somebody might do this, but not many. Okay. Bang. Okay, so cosine's pattern is max, x, min, x, max. And then flip all of those over to get the co the secant values. All right, Schwartz. Okay, so all the axes would be on. Yes, they would be. Right. So all so two of them. Purple line in there. Und. Und. And then we got a solid uh, one for the first one. Yep. So they share a point at the max and the mins. Got a negative one. And we got a one. So it's going to share this one going to have an asymptote here. You're adding an extra, like asymptote. Like, yeah. 
a random letter. Yep. Symptope. Asm. It looks like a mole. Okay. So they share the maxes and the mins. If this was a min, which way do you think the U opens? Which way did it open on the calculator? Down. Just stays between the asms. Then what's happening on the first one, we would see half of the U. And if we wanted the other half, we would be going to the left here. Yes, you know it's a U. We are making that assumption based on the graph. Well, fancy, huh? we, we don't know, and we're never going to find the exact values of the U. We're just no, sure. we're just looking for the general shape and pattern and what direction they go. Okay, so let's throw all of our information together in one of these buggers. We're going to do two. Table and graph. Can we what? Oh, time out. Chill. That's that chill. So, undefined are as our axis values are asms. Maxes and mins are our u's opening up and down. Okay. Okay. Everybody ready? Here we go. Put it all together. Okay, I've got a secant, so what graph are we going to think about? Cosine's graph, we're going to think cosine. Is it in standard form if there was a cosine in there? What's wrong with it? The B, the B is inside of parentheses. What is my B that's in here? Not two, that's not two, it's one half. Take out the one half. Divide the one half out is the same as multiplying by two. So if I multiply by two here and I multiply by two here, x minus pi over two. Okay. We're still going to take out the four things. Amplitude. What number is sitting in the amplitude spot? A two. But think for a minute. What was the definition of amplitude? How far away it is from the axis. From the axis. Okay, take a look at my graph. So I'm looking at the secant. I'm looking at the red graph. Here's my axis. How far is it from the axis to this max that's in here? Infinity. It's infinity. So it doesn't have an amplitude, and not a measurable amplitude. Because they go up forever and they go down forever. So technically. We have a question, Pop. Okay, now you gotta go back. Are we doing the so when doing the secant and the cos, or the secant and the, um, I think the other word. Cosecant? Cosine? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Um, are you going with the red? Red. <laughs> red is secant. Okay, so amplitude technically does not apply here. But we do need that amp number to find our max and mins on the cosine graph. So what's in the A spot? A 2. So we're going to use a 2 to find our max and mins. But the definition of amplitude, that distance doesn't exist because it goes off to infinity. Period. Because it goes with cosine, it's 2 pi divided by the b. That will give us 4 pi. Vertical shift. My axis, where is it, where is it going to be? Nope, vertical shift. Is there any vertical shift here? None. Or zero. So my axis is at zero. 
and phase. How much phase does it have? Three, pi over right, not pi over four. It's pi over two. Okay. Uh, it's got to be a number added to this function or subtracted. My parents said put the clock in Would it be none or zero? Same thing. Okay, so where's my leading x value at? Because it's a right pi over 2, I'm starting there. Start at the phase. How do I calculate the ending value? Phase plus period. So phase is 1 half. Period is 4. Then we'll stick a pi on the answer after. What's 4 plus a half? 4 and a half as a fraction is 8, 9 over 2. That seemed to be, th that this ending value seems to be the biggest struggle for everybody. From what I've seen go up on the board. But see how it's all the same? Nothing has changed. The steps we are following have been the same from day one. Now it's average. You guys need to learn how to average to get the middle stuff. Add it together. Add it together. So one half plus nine halves is ten halves. That's five, and I've got to divide by two. So five pi over two. <laughs> you got a little problem there. You can't put pi in. So then one half plus five halves is six halves. That's three. Divide by two, I got three pi over two. I see a pattern. One, three, five, this must be seven pi over two. All the odds. Okay. And homework. Now. <laughs> so pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 5, 7, 9 pi over 2. Scooching. Scooching. Uh, it'll say make two tables. We'll do one tomorrow, just to refresh your memory how to do that. Oh, next week sometime. Yeah, we got time yet. All right. Um, I want the pattern for cosine. This was a cosine flipped over. So what's cosine? Max. Look at how quick you are. X. Min. X. Max. Okay. We know maxes and mins are shared. So, where is my max if it was a cosine? What do I look at over here? What's going to help me? Your max, if it was a cosine, would be a 2. two. two. I'm going 2 above my 0, so 2. X is always, because I'm doing secant, what's it going to be? Undefined. Don't put zero. So we'll fill in those undefined right now. Where's my min going to be at? Negative two. Negative two, and back at two. Yeah. So. Why is the amp two? Two is so I can make the table. The definition of amplitude was distance from axis to max. Well, axis to infinity is not measurable, so it doesn't apply. So we just, where's the two come from? The 2 is sitting in the A spot, it's the A value. It's the amplitude on cosine. And I know that maxes and mins are shared, so I need that number to fill in the max and mins. All right, let me put in my asymptotes, asymptotes at, <laughs> I don't know, asymptotes. There and there. Okay, wait, why did you put them there? 
because they're in the second and four spots. And then at pi over 2, it's at 2. And here it's at negative 2. And then back at 2. So which way is the secant graph going to open up? It approaches the asymp. Here, I can approach it going which way, up or down? Because it's a min, I'm going to go down to both asymps. And I'm back to a max, I'm going up and approach the asymp. Technically, if I extended my graph, it would be the rest of the U would be that way, and not necessary though. Because that's cosine. I started out with secant. Oh. Oh. Short, quick question. Yes. How come not the ones that you did on the side? Yes. Do they always approach the undefined thing? Yes, always. Okay. One more example. One. Betsy might need this, though. I think she's the only one writing. Yeah. You're good? Yeah. Okay. I'd give it to you if you needed it. <laughs> You're wasting your life. Don't tell me these things. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. So it's a cosecant. So think which trig function? Think about <laughs> sine. Get it in standard form. So what's the B number that I need to take out of the parentheses? Two. What's going to be left in the parentheses when you take out the two? X, and because you're divided out. Any questions so far? Pick out the four things. Amplitude. Two, but a flip. Mm, is this cosecant? Is there a distance from the axis to the max and an axis to the min? If it's a U that goes up forever? No. And down forever? It's not measurable. So on the test, I want to see NA. But what number is going to help us make the table? Two with a flip. It would be so much easier if we could just write two. I know, but it's not. It, the amplitude is a measurable distance, and this doesn't have a measurable distance. So, so do I catch people on this, and they give me like four easy points on the test? Because what they put there, two flip, wrong. 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 So for for cosecant, no. Always. Period. Is two pi. Yep. Divided by what's the B? Two. A two, so the period is pi. Vertical shift? Mm -mm. Which the three is the vertical shift number. This negative two was our amp number here with two with the flip. Phase. <laughs> what's our phase? Left pi over two. Okay, X's. X's have been your challenge. Okay, starting at left pi over two. So what should my starting X value be? Negative pi over two. You want to try and figure out that N value all on your own? How about all the X's all on your own? Do them. I'll do them slowly, and then you look. I don't, I don't even know how to get that. <laughs> phase plus period. Look at you, though, Alexa. 
Negative one half is my phase. Okay. The period is <coughs> one. It is pi over two. Wait, why is it pi over two? That's what negative one half plus why? one equals. Oh, you have to throw in the negative? Well, yes. We have been for two days now. So, so the middle is zero. I just thought yeah. I've been doing wrong the whole way. Wait, I didn't figure it out. Yeah. The middle is zero. Okay, I can do these ones in my head because they're pretty easy. Halfway between zero and a half is a quarter. Nothing too challenging there. But you've got to be able to get those on your own, so you should be trying something. Don't just copy down and say, oh, good. Well, I can do these. Yes, you can, but we just saw that you're not very good at the calculator. <laughs> one time. All right. Signs pattern. What's signs pattern? X, max, X, min, X. But this one was flipped over. So I'm going to switch these. On the matching. Yep. I'll show you. Oh, you have matching today. I haven't done any yet, but you're going to see what it's like today. You should be good at the matching because you spent all that time writing those equations. Okay, uh, because I'm doing a cosecant, uh, what are my axis values going to be? Und. Und. All three of them are und. I'm going to figure out the min and max on my graph here first. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is because I do have vertical shift. I have a new axis at three. So I'm going to be going above and below that horizontal axis of three. Because there are um, zeros, technically zeros that we're flipping over. Yeah, but if I put three, um, if I put the number in here, it makes a zero there. It's okay. Just go with it. Every time there's an axis, it's going to have an asymptote. So no matter what. No matter what. Axis is yes. Okay. Because what happens is this part over here is a a zero, and then I'm trying to flip this over and add infinity to three, and it doesn't work. So always axis values are undefined. All right, so if I had an amplitude in parentheses of two and my vertex or my vertical shift was at three, where is my min going to be at? One. Because so I'm going to go down two from the three. So this is going to be at one. Where's my max going to be at? Five. So at negative pi over 2, it says undefined. So what am I going to draw? A vertical asymptote. At 0, again, and then at the pi over 2. So then it was 1 as a min, and then 5 as a max. Now I just got to draw the u's in. So if it was a min, which way does my u go? Down. Down. This was a max, so it goes up. Done. Okay. What's your question?
Okay. You're good. Right. Yep. The cosecant will always have the two full U's, and the other one has the two halves and a full. All right. Um, you're going to do page. This is on the other section. This is the matching that I've been talking about. Do not use a calculator to graph these. So this is matching with the equation with the graph. And then the new stuff today. Don't match, don't use a calculator on that. Practice that by looking at the graphs and the equations for the clues. Let's go with 14, 18, 22. <laughs> 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 